Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Join with us as we are going through the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 4. After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and seated on the thrones were twenty-four elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne on each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their th crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. We're moving into a new section in the book of Revelation, as you might have gathered <clears throat> the seven letters to the churches are passed, and now we moved into a view of heaven and of things to come. Johnny Cash once said, How well I have learned that there is no fence to sit on between heaven and hell. There is a deep, wide gulf, a chasm, and in that chasm is no place for any man. C.S. Lewis remarked, Aim at heaven and you'll get earth thrown in. Aim at earth and you'll get neither. Kind of goes along with what Paul has told us in Colossians chapter 3, where we're to set our minds on things above, not on the things of the earth. <clears throat> a view of heaven and of things to come is not so critical in that we can check a box and watch things happen, but so that our worship of the one on the throne is real and always before us. Notice the first words in chapter 4, after this, and the end of verse 1, it, it, it repeats it after this as well, signifying something of a timeline or of a transition, it seems. After what? Well, after the message to the churches, after the time of the churches. It may refer to the fact that the church is taken away. John is taken up into heaven through an open door, and a voice like a trumpet speaks. I will show you the things what much soon take place. The church is not on earth, and it's not mentioned from Revelation chapter 4 through chapter 19. So Jesus, in introducing himself in chapter 1, he writes seven letters to the churches, and now we have a view from and of heaven prior to chapter 6 and the judgment of God poured out on earth. Chapter 4 and 5 then detail for us worship from a heavenly perspective. Like Isaiah 6 and Ezekiel 1, chapter 4 gives us a peek into heaven. And it's always helpful to remember that as John uses symbols, not everything is symbolic. Symbols represent or look to point us towards something, but they are always less than the reality. John is told to come up, to be shown the things that must take place. There's no doubt that these things will happen. The voice that speaks to him again, it's that same voice from chapter 1, like a trumpet. Remember, it's not a trumpet, but... As he's describing things throughout the book, here especially as something in heaven, he's trying to put it into words, things that are undescribable. Some see this event tied to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, and the, the gathering up of the church with Jesus in the air, the rapture, if you will. Spurgeon said this, It is very little that we can know of the future state, but we may be quite sure that we know as much as is good for us. We ought to be as content with that which is not revealed as with that which is. If God will us not to know, we ought to be satisfied not to know. Depend on it. He hears, he told us all about heaven that is necessary to bring us there. If he had revealed more, it would have served rather for the gratification of our curiosity than for the increase of our grace. Our view is to be shifting from earth to heaven, from things of this world to things of the next. The view of of the next, well, it's coming in the weeks to come, in the days to come. And we often wonder, well, when will these things happen? And we'll outline some sort of a timeline, but the main thing is this peek into heaven is, are you ready? 
are your eyes and your thoughts and your mind set on heaven, or is it still focused on earth? Take some time today to review, to pray, and to keep your eyes on the one who's in heaven. Till next time, little by little.